Hello, I'm Susan McQuay. I'm a librarian at Naperville Public Library. I'll begin this introduction to visible mending by talking about the characteristics and background of the visible mending movement. Then I'll introduce a basic technique for a few visible mending methods. Visible mending is repairing clothing or household items in a creative way. The mending is proudly visible because it extends the life of an item that would otherwise be thrown away. It also adds value by allowing an item to tell the story of its use. The image on the left is an example of kintsugi, the Japanese art of repairing broken pottery by mending breaks with the addition of lacquer or powdered gold. It treats damage and repair as part of the history of an object rather than something to disguise. Marks of use are valued. Visible mending is inspired by this perspective. There are a number of popular styles for visible mending that are easy to learn. The handmade and perfect quality of visible mending allows everyone to participate. It provides self-expression and lets us make something unique. Visible mending also encourages mindfulness. To many, a visible mend is more than a style of stitches. It's a badge, a form of activism against fast fashion and the status quo of disposable culture. According to Town & Country Magazine, Fast fashion refers to clothing manufactured at warp speed and sold at a low price point. This results in consumers buying large quantities of clothing that are worn only a few times and replaced. This type of buying increased 400% in the last 20 years. Cheap clothes require cheap labor that is found worldwide in a poorly regulated supply chain. Resistance to disposable culture has gained momentum due to labor and environmental tragedies. In 2013, the collapse of a building in Bangladesh, which housed five garment factories, killed over a thousand people and injured many more, most of them young women. The environmental impacts of fast fashion include the loss of renewable resources and the use of massive amounts of water and energy. According to the World Economic Forum, the fast fashion industry is the second largest consumer of water. It takes approximately 700 gallons to produce one cotton shirt and 2,000 gallons to produce a pair of jeans. Fabric dyeing is the world's second largest polluter of water. Moreover, fast fashion tends to use synthetic fibers, which take hundreds of years to biodegrade. It is estimated that 35% of all microplastics in the ocean come from the laundering of synthetic textiles. Visible mending is an affordable and equitable solution that calls upon techniques that were once commonplace. Sashiko is an old style of patching used for reinforcement and for layering fabric scraps. It was practiced by laborers in Japan and employed on garments referred to as boro, meaning rags. Examples such as the lumberman's robe pictured here are now valued items in museums. Traditionally, Sashiko uses white thread on indigo dyed fabric. The style uses geometric patterns made up of tiny running stitches. Tools used include a long needle, Sashiko thread, or embroidery floss, or pearl cotton thread. Sashiko thread is a single strand that doesn't pull apart. If you use embroidery floss, divide the floss into sets of three strands. To divide the floss, hold it up high and pull it apart slowly to avoid tangling. You'll also need scissors, tailor's chalk, or a washable pencil or pen, a ruler, a thimble for pushing the needle through multiple layers of fabric, and a needle threader. Needle nose pliers are useful for pulling the threads through layers of fabric. Beeswax is an option for coating the thread to make sewing easier. To create a Sashiko inspired patch, trim any long threads from the spot you are mending. Cut a patch from similar weight fabric. Make the patch larger than the spot to be mended. Don't hem the patch. The fraying that will occur over time is part of the aesthetic. Iron everything before you start. If you're mending a hole, place the patch with either over the hole or below peeking through. Secure the patch with either a washable glue stick, pins, or basting, depending on the weight of your fabric. My lightweight patch seen here only needed some dabs of glue to stay in place over a spot that I was covering. 
Draw grid lines or dots according to part on the patch. Extend the marks if you'd like to stitch beyond the patch. Begin a running stitch from the underside of the fabric. Along the surface of the fabric, gather multiple stitches onto the needle by rocking the needle and scooping up tiny stitches. Gently pull the fabric flat and continue. Complete a row, turn the item 180 degrees and sew in the opposite direction. Repeat to create rows of stitches. When your horizontal stitches are complete, create little pluses by turning your item 90 degrees and repeating the stitch pattern. You can also use this method to combine multiple patches. Look to the library resources that I'll be mentioning to find many Seshko inspired patterns and ways to create your own designs. Darning, once a common chore, is now a popular technique among visible menders. You can add to and adapt stitch placement and colors to create interesting designs on both knit and woven fabrics. For darning, use any needle with an eye large enough for your thread. Many menders prefer a blunt tapestry needle that won't tear threads. If you don't have fiber close to that in the original fabric, choose something slightly thicker rather than thinner. A darning egg or mushroom like the one at top left holds the fabric shape when darning a sock or a sleeve. You can easily use a similar shape like an orange. An embroidery hoop is helpful for light knits and woven fabrics, but don't stretch too tight or the darn will warp the fabric. Light knits can also be reinforced with lightweight knit interfacing before darning. Begin a darn from the underside, starting about a half inch away from the hole. Repeat a few stitches on top of each other to secure your thread instead of a knot where it might be uncomfortable to wear. Sew a straight line of running stitches along the hole until you are about a half inch beyond it. Reverse and sew an offset line of stitches closer to the hole. Repeat with staggered rows of stitches that are closely spaced together. As the thread spans the gap, monitor an even tension. Continue with rows a half inch beyond the gap. These completed vertical rows are referred to as the warp. Turn the item 90 degrees and repeat the process to create the weft. However, this time when you reach the hole, alternate going over and under the warp threads. Don't worry if it's not exact. Again, sew a half inch beyond the hole. Complete by tying off the yarn and weaving in the remaining tail. For a sack, I used a pickleball to hold the shape. I inserted the needle at a distance, leaving a tail that was threaded back on the needle and woven into the finished weave. Again, I stitched the warp threads, then wove in the weft threads. This was a cozy mend to wear and the wool yarn felt together with each washing, creating a stronger patch. Embroidery is useful for small holes and stains. You can do a lot with just a few different stitches. I'll show a mend using satin stitch, which stacks single stitches to fill in a shape. These are small holes in a lightweight knit t-shirt. On the reverse side, I ironed a bit of lightweight fusible interfacing to close most of the holes. The largest remained. In the spirit of visible mending, I freehand stitched the word mend over the hole using the satin stitch. With satin stitch, you wrap the shape with thread on both the surface and underside of the fabric. For this mend, I used an embroidery hoop and I combined individual strands from three different colors of floss. From the book, A Year of Embroidery by Miko Higuchi, I traced a butterfly pattern and a wash away fabric stabilizer. Then with a tiny embroidery hoop, I secured the stabilizer over a stained corner of a tablecloth. This pattern uses satin stitch on the outer wings, chain stitch on the interior, back stitch for the antenna, and French knots for the spots. When the stitching was complete, I trimmed away the stabilizer and rinsed off the bits that remained. You also have the opportunity to stitch with the embroider machine at the library. A short class on how to use the machine is required before use. That class and the Explore Embroidery Machine software class 
in which you can learn to create designs for the machine are offered periodically. Needle felting is great for repairing knits and woven fabrics. There are some synthetic fabrics that needle felting will not always adhere to as well. Tools for surface felting include a small gauge needle, such as a number 40 gauge, wool fiber. There are Midwestern farms that sell great wool for felting. You'll need a felting mat to protect both your work surface and the delicate notch tip of the felting needle. An inexpensive and environmental mat option is a cloth or burlap sack filled with grain. A sponge is another option for a mat. A cookie cutter is useful for quickly making shapes, and you can create your own custom, custom cookie cutter with the library's 3D printer. To repair a hole, place the item on your felting mat. Place a small ball of wool over the damaged area, extending into the healthy areas of the fabric. Hold the needle vertically and use a straight up and down motion to gently jab the wool repeatedly to integrate the wool into the fabric. Do not bend or put excessive pressure on the tip of the delicate needle. Gather stray fibers with the needle and jab them into the center. Pause occasionally to separate the item from the mat. Continue felting until the wool is as condensed as you like. Washing the item will condense the wool further. I fixed a frayed cuff with decorative wool yarn with bits of wool needled over it. You can quickly create shapes with a cookie cutter. You must fill the cutter with wool gradually as you needle. Wool does not tend to bend around or into angles, so use small tufts of wool for those areas. Creative Bug is a wonderful crafter's resource available with a Naperville library card. It has over a thousand online classes and expert step-by-step -step instructions with patterns and templates. Creative Bug classes include sashiko sewing, sweater mending, introductory needle felting, and many embroidery and crochet classes. You can access Creative Bug from our online learning and research page. Check out our books on Visible Mending. Click on a book pictured here to go to our catalog. Thanks for viewing this presentation, and happy mending.